Hey guys, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I wrote a Python program to solve a problem that I was having. Let me show you. So, right here, I have a PDF of one of the funds that I'm invested in, and it's located at this URL on um, Charles Schwab's website. So, I can just come to this and look for updates, check for updates, and that's what I do. Updates are given every month. So the problem is I'm not sure when those updates actually happen. It seems to vary from month to month. So sometimes it's like the first of the month, sometimes it's the middle of the month. And that's kind of like the pain point for me, the fact that I have to come out and check it on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whatever I decide. Why not write a Python program to notify me when an update has been issued? So that's what I did. And that's what I'm going to walk you through in this video tutorial. There's basically three parts to it. One part that downloads and detects that there has been a change in the PDF. One part that actually schedules the Python script to run on a daily basis at a certain time. And one part to notify me in the event that there is a change. So we're going to go through each one of those three parts individually. I won't get too deep into the code that I wrote. That'll be available for you on my website if you wanna go dive deeper into that, but I'll just demonstrate how this works and hopefully you guys can walk away with something uh, as far as maybe learning something more about Python or helping you with cron jobs, which is how we're gonna execute the Python program or the notification setup that I have set up here. So um, yeah, let's, let's get into it. So um, for this case, I actually am not going to be able to use this PDF because I don't know when it's going to be updated. So what I did in lieu of that is put a test PDF on my website at tonyteaches.tech and I'll be able to change this. It's always going to be at test.pdf. I'll change the content of it so the so everything changes just like when um, this changes on a monthly basis it stays the same name but uh, the content of it changes. So you'll see what I mean in a second. What I'm first going to do and what I've actually already done is logged into the server where I have wrote this Python program. It consists of three files in a folder. So we have a downloader, something that hashes, and something that notifies. Those are the three parts to the program that I was talking about. There's also a folder called updates, which there's nothing in it yet, but that's where we're going to archive all the PDFs that we have downloaded and check to see if there is a difference in them. So I think the best way to show this is to just demonstrate it in real time, like demonstrate it working. So just so you know, there is a, um, a notification aspect to this, which I have put on my phone. And I'm going to go ahead and record the screen on my phone so you guys can see what's going on. And uh, let me just set that up real quick here. So, we're on stage. Okay, there we go. so I'm recording my screen now. And I'll just let that sit here. And let's execute the program. So to execute the program, you just have to type in Python 3. And this is the manual execution. So Python 3 and then downloader. So we're going to hit Enter and you'll see that the first file has been saved. Now we won't get a notification on the phone because it hasn't found an update, but let's see what happens. So if we do an LS, we'll see that we have a PDF called latest.pdf in our directory now. And if we go into our updates folder, you'll see that that has been date time stamped and archived away for us if we ever need to refer to it in the future. Okay, so if we run the program again, we're gonna see that nothing has happened because this PDF is still the same, right? I guess I should show you real quick just some of the code so this this is making sense. Um, this this is the only important part that I wanna show you. The URL that we're looking at is tonyteaches.tech slash test.pdf, okay? And that's up here. I do have access to that server right here, which you can see we have the test.pdf located in the root of the web directory. What I'm going to do is uh, move that test.pdf and I'm going to save it as test1.pdf and I'm going to rename test test2.pdf and give it a name of test.pdf. So basically 
now when we refresh this page, we should see PDF number two. And that's what we see. So now when I run my program, the program should detect that this PDF has changed. And the way we're doing that is with hashing. And I'm not gonna go into hashing. It's just basically a way to look at this file and uh, give it a unique value and compare that value versus the value of another PDF, right? They're gonna be two different things because they have two different contents. So let's run the program again and let's see if it detected that change. So Python 3 downloader.py. I found an update and there you go. The notification on my phone has happened. You'll see here that a new PDF, found, a new PDF was found. So let's click on that. And there it is. So if we click on the link, which is part of the notifi part of the notification on my phone, that'll go ahead and load for PDF number two. So that's really cool. Let's try to run it again and see what happens. What do you think will happen? No update because that, that PDF file hasn't changed. And just for completeness sake, let's move test2.pdf Let's move this PDF out of the way and let's get our test3.pdf and put it there. So let's refresh the page and that's not necessary. It's just showing you what we're going to expect. Run the program again. Oops, let's go back over to our Python program. Run the program again. Found an update and we should be getting our notification. There it is. And bam, we have our second notification. We can go ahead and click that to see the updated PDF. And behind the scenes here real quick, um, we still have the latest PDF, which is gonna be the third PDF at this point. And if we go into the updates, you'll see that we have the original, which is test PDF number one, number two, and number three. I think they're in that order. Yeah, so let's go under the hood a little bit, just real quick to show you the code, some of the code. I said I wanna get into it too deeply, but I just wanna go over the, the big aspects of this, the bigger parts. So let's take a look at the downloader again. And the entry point for this application is here, check for updates. So that's, that's just a function that I wrote right here called check for updates. It's basically gonna download a file from this URL right here, this URL, and put it into a local file that's date time stamped from this two lines of code. It's gonna get the hash of the file called latest, which you saw was a file that existed in that directory. And don't worry about the try catch right now, but it's also gonna get the hash of the file that we just downloaded it's gonna compare them, and if they don't match, that means we have actually a new file, and we're gonna move them around. We're basically gonna archive the newest one and rename the newest one to latest.pdf, and then we're gonna send a notification. If none of that's true, if, they, if the hashes match, if they're the same, that means an update hasn't been issued, and we'll just say no update, and we'll remove that file. So that's basically how that works. Um, there's just some imports at the top and a reusable function that moves around those files like I was talking about. What about the hashing? Let's look at the hasher. This is generic hashing code. You can find it on Stack Overflow or any um, you know, tech blog, software blog. So this basically just takes in a file and computes its hash. And like I said earlier, a hash is just a way to get a unique value from a file in this case. Okay, and then the last piece to the program is the notifier. And this is where I was kind of torn because I would really like to have an email notification sent to me, but I email is a really hard thing to do. Like setting up your own email server is a really hard thing to do in my opinion. You know, with Gmail and all Microsoft's email and Apple's email, there's such tough spam filters nowadays that it's really hard to get your email server set up to a point where you can get past those filters. There's a lot of certificates and a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't even want to mess with. So that's why I decided to use this um, 
what is it called? The service at pushsafer.com. I think it's like a German company. I have a I have a um, account with them. You get 50 free API calls. So each time I'm doing one of those notifications, it counts as an API call. And basically they just have an API for Python that I'm able to use their, um, make a request to their API service and their backend is gonna handle sending the notification to my phone, which I have an Android app downloaded for. So you can see that here. Um, there's, there's my unique key, my private key, which you guys probably shouldn't see. And um, the, the text for my notification, new PDF was found, um, the title for it, and then just the, the actual notification happening right here. So that, that's that third part of the program. And all three of them work together to send the notification to me when a PDF was updated. The thing that I didn't talk about yet was how this runs on a daily basis. And I do that with a cron job. And actually I haven't set that up. So let's set that up now. So if you go on your computer to cron tab dash E for edit, oops, cron tab dash E. So here is a list of all my cron tabs. I just have one at this point, which is pretty much this. I'll read it to you. This every minute, which is what these five stars mean. Every minute, I'm going to write the date into a file called temp.test.txt. Temp, in the temp directory, there's a file called test.txt where the date's going to be. So let's just look at that. So right now, the time is 22.10.01. So in a minute, we can check that and it'll be 22.11.01. Um, let's go back in there and add the cron tab for this program. So it's going to be, let's see, the first minute or, you know, well, let me just write it. So at 6 a.m., this is 6 a.m., this would be 6.01 a.m., this is 6.10 a.m., okay? So at 6 a.m., um, this is every week, month, year, I forget what they are, it says it up here what each of those stars mean. The stars are just wild cards for every. So basically this just means every day at 6 a.m., kind of like we did on the, the, the command line, we'll call the program called Python 3 and execute the, the program. We'll call the, the application Python 3, execute the program at root Campbell uh, downloader.py. So just to review, every morning at 6 a.m. we're going to execute uh, the Python program downloader.py. So we'll go ahead and save that. And you'll see it has installed the new cron tab for us. Um, yes, it's been a minute later. So just to prove that how cron tabs work, if you're not familiar with it, you'll see that a minute ago, the time in that file was 10 and now it's 11. So those are the three main aspects to this program. I think um, it, it, it's some people would say that this is overkill. Tony, just go ahead and check the PDF whenever you feel like it. But I like to automate things. I like to make my life easier by uh, using software, leveraging the power of technology to do that. And you guys can do the same thing. So. If you got any value out of this, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you're going to do something similar for automation for your own personal reasons. I would love to know. That's kind of cool. Um, I'll also have all this code linked on my blog at tonyteachers.tech. I'll put a specific link below for that. So if you need to copy and paste anything, that'll all be there for you as well. All right, guys, um, thank you guys for watching. Like I said, give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe to this channel if you want more like this. And if you do, I will see you in the next one.